So I started writing a retrospective on Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, the original ones. And after writing about, oh, I don't know, about 35 pages of a script, yeah, I decided to just toss it. Because those pages of writing doesn't really reflect how I feel about those games. I mean, the whole purpose was to, yeah, go ahead, talk about the history behind the games and, you know, say what I felt about the story or felt about the gameplay, but it didn't really show how I truly felt or what the games meant to me as as a gamer and as a, as a fan of the franchise. So instead, we're going to do this and we're going to talk. And I'm going to talk about Resident Evil 2. The OG Resident Evil 2 that released back in 1998. And yeah, we'll go over some brief history, but... I mostly want to touch on what the game means to me. Because... While it's not my favorite Resident Evil... Sure as hell isn't the worst one. And... It's definitely in top 5 most days, some days. Maybe not today, but that's okay. It, the game has a place in my heart and will always have a place in my heart and I actually wanted to talk about that. More so than just going through the history that you can basically get off of any other retrospective. You know, comparisons from one version to the other and how the game was developed and all this. You can find that in every other retrospective that's out there. So why would you watch another one? To hear the same regurgitated content over and over and instead... Hear somebody's God honest opinions as to why they enjoy the game. So that's what we're going to do. Welcome to my Resident Evil retrospective. Resident Evil. Retrospective. So as I mentioned, the original Resident Evil 2 released in 1998. And I didn't get the game at that time. I didn't own a PlayStation. I owned a Nintendo 64. And in 1998 was also the re release of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And that was my absolute favorite game ever at that time. For good reason, right? Who didn't like Ocarina of Time. If you didn't like Ocarina of Time, I want to hear in the comments section so that way I can just ban you from my channel. But anyways, at that time, I was playing Ocarina of Time. And the thing with Resident Evil 2, even though it did release in that same year, is that right before that, we had a director's cut of the original Resident Evil game. And the director's cut came bundled with Resident Evil 2 demo. And the reason for this is because they had some development history or developmental problems with Resident Evil 2. And so in order to kind of appease the fans for the moment, they released this director's cut, which was supposed to be unedited. But, you know, it was edited when it released. Fine. Whatever. I really don't care. And I still don't care either way. It doesn't matter. Great game. But my first experience with Resident Evil 2 was that demo. And... I didn't own Director's Cut. I had to play it from a friend. A friend of mine let me borrow Director's Cut, and in that bun or in that case came the demo for RE2. And I played the demo for RE2 and I enjoyed it. You play as Leon and you go through the beginning part of the game up until you get to the star's office, and that's where it ends as you encounter Ada. Clearly, this does not happen in the actual game, but that's how it was portrayed in the demo. As I mentioned, the game did go through developmental changes and some developmental problems. Uh, they scrapped about 80% of the game. And they redid it. Uh, keeping some assets, keeping some things. Leon stayed the same. But they changed one character, Elza Walker. They changed her into Claire. That's basically all you need to know for the history, to be honest with you. But like I said, there's a lot of other videos out there that you can watch to get more in-depth, detailed history on Resident Evil 2. But playing this and being a fan already of the first game, 
it was different. It felt different. I mean, the design of the game was made to feel more in line with like a 90s aesthetic vibe, kind of like the zombie movies of the time. Yeah, we had, you know, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, all those zombie movies. And this was kind of in the same vein of it. Hell, the, the commercial for it was directed by George A. Romero. So you could see the feel that they were going for this, and I absolutely ate it up. Well, the first game played more along the lines of like Night of the Living Dead being stuck in the mansion, similar to like being stuck in the cabin in Night of the Living Dead. This one was more of like Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead in, in a city-wide outbreak. And it was different. It was exciting. And when the game came out, again, I didn't buy the game. I went over to my cousin's house one night. And I spent the weekend there. And he, as I got there, he told me that he just got Resident Evil 2. And he was also my first introduction for Resident Evil. Just in general. Like, I played the original Resident Evil at his house. He was also my first introduction to Final Fantasy through Final Fantasy VI, or at the time it was called Final Fantasy III, and Final Fantasy VII, and Tactics. So, you know, my cousin, between him and I, we shared a lot of love for the same genre and the same games. And so, I was excited because I got to experience Resident Evil 2 for the first time, and he had already played the game. So, we sat down... And we played through the game. And little did I know he was actually recording me with a video with a uh, cassette player. Yeah, this was back in the 90s. Remember, this is cassette player times. Yeah, we, we had CDs at the time. But cassette players were was the way that you wanted to record audio at the time. So, yeah, we had cassette players. So he recorded me and him playing the game. And as I'm playing the game... You know, encountering the liquor for the first time, getting scared, zombies busting through the windows, you know, flooding through into the hallways of the RPD, seeing Mr. X, seeing G. William Birkin for the first time. It was all exciting. It was terrifying. And it was a blast. Absolute blast. And like I said, my cousin recorded, recorded this. The entire time that we were playing. And I didn't know. And he, so playing it back. Because after he told me that he was recording. We played it back. And it was just the funniest thing we've ever heard. Because see the thing is in RE2. They added some new mechanics to it. And some of the new mechanics was. You could shoot off the body parts of the zombies. If you hit their torso the right way. Their arm falls off with a part of their torso. And so. You hear me and my cousin laughing. As we shoot a zombie with a shotgun, saying that we shot off her ar the, the zombie's arm. It was a female zombie. We shot off her arm and part of her titty. Yeah. That was how the, cha the tape went for the most part. Stuff like that. Just nonsense stuff. And it was funny. It was fun. And, you know, two young kids talking about 1998. You know, I was, I was it's something I'm always going to remember. Something I'm always going to cherish. The game itself solidified my love for this franchise. It solidified my love for these characters. Not so much the story yet, because honestly, the story was... was It was good, but I didn't really fully appreciate the story until I was later. In, or older. Much later in life. When I revisited the game. So when I eventually bought this game for myself... I, I think I bought it around 2001, 2002. The PlayStation had already, not fizzled out, but the, play, the PS2 had already come out. And the PS2 basically, you know, started. they started releasing new games. We had Code Veronica release on the Dreamcast. We had Resident Evil Remake release, Resident Evil Zero, you know, around that time. And yeah, I bought those games. I bought Resident Evil Remake on release. I bought Resident Evil Zero on release. Code Veronica I didn't buy on release. I bought Code Veronica later. But anyways, the PS2 had already released. And here I am buying the PS1 RE2. But my copy was the DualShock version. So I got to play with the analog sticks if I wanted to. I mean, you didn't have to. And honestly, it doesn't really work for tank controls anyways. 
and it had rumble features into it which was nice it was different it was you know it made for a different experience at the time similar to how some of the rumble features these days work you know hd rumble on the switch and um and you have the haptic feedback rumble that's on the ps5 you know it, it's a different experience and rumble being new at the time with the dual shock controllers on the on the playstation it was an experience it was different and this time playing through the game i got to play through it by myself and i made it a habit to play these games in the dark complete darkness turn off all the lights in the middle of the night so everyone's asleep and i'm the only one in the room and i made it an experience for myself something that i got to enjoy with nobody else to guide me with nobody else to watch me play nobody to to be around it added to that isolation that that you feel when you play these games because most of the time in resident evil games the older ones anyways you're you're alone you know you're you're your character you're alone in re1 you had chris and jill whichever character you played as you were basically by yourself in that giant mansion yeah you ran into the other characters here and there but you were by yourself re2 same thing you played as leon or claire yes you ran into some of the other characters for the most part you were by yourself no contact with anybody else yes they would contact each other through the through the radio but it wasn't at a like, wasn't a constant contact so it's not like i could just ring up claire and be like hey how you doing what part of the rpd are you in right now want to meet up you know you couldn't do stuff like that so putting that environment for myself in the room allowed me to just have a different experience altogether and, and really enjoy this game for what it was. And it was incredible. I loved playing through the game. I, I didn't love Claire's story so much or Claire's playthrough so much. I still don't to this day, to be honest with you. But it just it didn't it didn't feel like a complete story. Where Leon's story felt more complete. Granted, the whole complete story is merging the two together because the proper way to play the game, or at the time, right, the canon story was Claire side A, Leon side B, where Leon fights William Birkin in his final form at the end. That was the proper way to play it. So, you know, having that story intertwine with one another with the playthroughs, it just, it was different. Where RE1 didn't do anything like that. RE2 completely changed the way that the story was told. Because of that side A, side B system. And as I mentioned, Leon's story feeling a little bit more complete than Claire's. That also has a lot to do with the development problems that they had. Because they had to basically scrap the story, scrap the development, start over and take some of the assets and carry them over. Leon's story basically remained intact. Elsa's story was changed into Claire's story and they made modifications to that story. So that's one of the reasons why for me Claire's story just didn't feel complete. In a similar way to how I feel about RE1 where Jill's story feels more complete than Chris's. Because Jill's story interacts more with the, with the other characters. You have Barry, you have Wesker, they just interact more often and tells this other story this broader story of betrayal. So RE2, along with the zapping system, which made that story feel real because the the things that you did in Claire side A affects Leon side B, it made that game feel so different. It was special. Something that we've never seen in another Resident Evil game to this day, which is unfortunate. I would love to see them do something like this again. But unfortunately, every Resident Evil game so far has been just you play as one character one story that's it where RE2 was the start of something new a start, start of something special the way that the game dealt with replayability the game the, the, the way that the game dealt with the gameplay in general being able to have more than two zombies on screen at a time was amazing walking down a hallway and finding 
five, six, seven zombies flooding in and you have to mow them all down before they come and swarm you. I'll never forget that moment and coming in and only having a handgun and like, what am I doing here? Things like that, that just stay with you. And the graphics at the time, this was like high quality graphics where the first Resident Evil used like actors and like did a live action thing. This one did actual full CG work. Like all the cutscenes were fully CG'd cutscenes, and it was incredible at the time. These days, doesn't they? They look like you know Barbie and Ken dolls. But back then, this was cutting edge. This was something new. It was so amazing to see and to hear the voice acting so much more improved than the first game. It felt like these characters were real. And through all these years, playing through the game more and more, getting deeper and deeper into the lore of all of the games, and being more invested into the lore for these games, I've grown to appreciate the older titles more so now than I did back then. Because again, these days, my views on these games are different. Back then, I played for the gameplay. I played for the cool factor of blowing up zombies. And fighting these big giant creatures like the giant alligator. But these days, I look at these games and I fall in love with the story for these games. These lone characters in over their head. Thrust into this zombie outbreak and they have only each other to survive. And they encounter some other people that they now feel responsible for to try and keep these people alive. It's something that, that, again, as a kid, I didn't really appreciate, but I do these days. And the more that I go back to these games, the more that I seem to notice when it comes to these games. Like the hidden room that you can access if you both, in both playthroughs, put your fingerprints to, uh, or like when you're in the Umbrella Labs at the end of the game. And you unlock a secret room that has its own soundtrack. Like, that secret room is so overlooked. But unless you're, like, exploring every crevice and you remember about the fingerprint thing, you're not going to encounter it. So it's things like that. It's things, things that you don't notice the first time that you play it. Maybe even the second time or third time. But I'm at the point that I play these games so much that I notice other things because I'm not so focused on just the character gameplay or, you know, the zombies that's there. I get to see a lot of the different nuances that's around the games. And it makes me feel good to play these games. After all these years, I still love going back to these games and playing them. It, it satisfies the child in me that grew up playing these games to know that hey look little me there's these other things in this game that you didn't know that you didn't know about back then like maybe the custom magnum the parts to get them are here or that secret room that i talked about it's things like that that will always make this game special to me. Again, it's not my favorite Resident Evil. But it's such a good one. And it'll always be a good one. And it holds up so much more than the first game ever will. And that's why we have a remake of the first game. Hell, we have a remake of the second one now. But the second original game still holds up. And hell, if you just want to have some mindless fun, you can just put the cheat code to unlock unlimited ammo. Because why not? That's what I do on live streams now. Just because I don't need to go like hardcore and playing these games anymore. I've already done that. Now I just play them. Unlimited ammo. Let's go. Just kill everything. Because it's fun. But anyways, thank you for 
listen to me talk about Resident Evil 2. Again, like I said, I mean, I wrote a 30 page, 35 page script that I just tossed out. I mean, I didn't toss it. I have it next to me, but maybe one day I'll release that. Maybe. But for now, I like the videos this way. And I hope you guys don't mind. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. In the next Resident Evil retrospective.